In this video, I'll show you how to find when a nonlinear equation intersects a line using the f-solve function. If you haven't seen my last video on f-solve and you aren't very comfortable with the function, uh, you can go back and watch that to get a good idea of how it works. Um, so our function we're looking at is an exponential multiplied by x squared. So um, we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 7 in steps of 0 0.1. So we'll have dx equals 0 0.1 and then x equals 0 dx 7. Um, our y is going to be x uh, it's going to be x dot squared uh, dot times exponential of minus x. Uh, and so we want to see when this function crosses a threshold. And so we have to define that threshold. And it'll just be threshold equals 0 0.25. And, uh, and, and we want to look at this plot. So we have to define a function. Uh, so, so we want to plot a horizontal line uh, denoting our threshold and uh, if we want to do that along x we have to have a vector that's the same length as x so the way we do that is using the retmat function which um, I'll show you how that works so thresh line equals zero uh, uh, sorry retmat uh, the the matrix we want to repeat so it'll be threshold threshold um, and then how um, so so um, how long we want to repeat it. So in this case, it'll be a row vector from 1 to the length of x. Um, and so if we want to plot that, we'll have uh, figure 1 um, plot x, y, x, y, um, and then uh, x thresh line. And then let's also add a grid. So grid, um, and if I pull that up, this is the function we get. Uh, and so here you can see our function, and this line here is our threshold. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to find one intersection first, and then I'll show you how to find both intersections. Uh, in the last video, I showed you how to do this using an internal function, but now I'll show you how to do it using an external function. Uh, so uh, the equations we're looking at is the equation we originally had is x squared minus e to the minus x, oops, my, uh, minus x, and we want to see when that's equal to 0 0.25. But in order to write this equation, we'll have to write it like this, x squared minus e to the minus x minus, geez, mi uh, minus x minus 0 0.25. Uh, and so I'm just going to run a quick, quick clear all just in case um, I forgot anything. And uh, we want to, so this is our threshold. And in our function, we want to use um, the value of this threshold. But we don't want to have to um, write 0 0.25. It'd be a little bit easier and more readable if we wrote threshold. Um, so we're going to have to, if we want to use it in our function, we have to declare it a global variable. So the way we do that is um, um, global threshold uh, and uh, I, I ran that clear all to delete this all this stuff um, and so our threshold threshold is 0 0.25 again um, and so so we're ready to write our function so I'll just pop over here and um, we'll so so uh, we'll have function function uh, output our output is going to be um, our output, and so we'll have my uh, function, the name of our file, it has to be the same. Uh, so, and it's going to be a function of our variables. Uh, and, and so in the program, we have to specify that we are going to use the global variable called threshold. So we type global threshold, and then our output is going to be, uh, basically, it's going to be our original equation. So um, or, or this, this equation over here that I wrote down. So var 1 dot squared dot exponential of minus var 1 um, minus threshold. So um, I'll put that there. And uh, then we have our end. 
So this is going to give us the value of, so, so uh, our var1 here is our x. Uh, and, it's, and this function is going to give us the value of x when it's equal to, when our function is equal to the threshold. Um, and so, uh, so we've written our function, we've saved it, and we can come back over here now. Uh, so just to, I'm just going to start a new cell here. And uh, when we use the fsol function, we have to uh, specify our initial guesses for what x might be. So uh, I'll write, uh, I'll, I'll call that beta. So beta equals, uh, and we'll just start at 0 now and see what that gives us. Um, and uh, so I'll give, uh, so I'm going to put the value of f solve into a variable called intersection because it gives us the value of x at the intersection. So, uh, so intersect equals f solve, and then we have to call our function. And since it's uh, it's external, we'll have to use this at symbol. So at my function uh, beta, and then I'm just going to add this next line that you don't have to, um, just so it won't print stuff. So we'll have optim options, uh, the function we're using, fsolve, display, and then we'll just turn it off. So off. Uh, and so uh, if we get if we run that, and everything's right, um, looks like we'll just have to change this initial value actually. So, um, so that should be okay. Um, What's going wrong here? We have var minus threshold. Hmm. Global threshold. Run that. Run that. There we go. Okay, I didn't. I didn't run this section before. So we get a value of zero point seven one four eight. Uh, and if we look back at the graph, that seems pretty reasonable. Um, you know, it's it's slightly less less than one, but um, it it's not. You know, it, it seems reasonable, so so we can continue on. Um, and uh, I could also make this three, and we should expect to get the the other intersection we found. So there we get four point three zero six six, and if we look back to the graph, that also seems pretty reasonable. So what would happen if we wanted to find both at the same time, uh, the value specifically the value of x at this intersection and this intersection in the same uh, function? Uh, well, the way we do that is we can go back to our function and uh, we're basically just going to do, we're just going to add another equation. Uh, but this time we're going to have to use another uh, variable. So, uh, so in this case, like this is, um, you know, x1 and then this is also x1. Uh, yeah, x1. And then here we'll have like uh, x2 and then also x2. So it's really the same thing. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, um, and but now we just have this, the the second subscript instead of the first. Um, and so if if I didn't explain that very well, you might want to go back and watch some of my other videos. Um, so so for now we can continue on though. It should work out okay. Um, so the only thing that's different now is that we have to. Um, specify two initial inputs. So, so if you see here, we have var one, that's the first subscript, and var two, uh, that's the second subscript. So, so uh, if it if it tries to, so beta here is our var, and if it tries to take the second subscript, it will be uh, out of the index of the matrix. So, so like I said, we'll have to put two values. So we'll have zero point five and three, um, and and let's run that. And so here we get both our values back, uh, and let's let's just plot that really quick to see what it looks like. So we'll have um, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this from up here, and um, oh, I'll need that too. I'll just grab all this. Um, okay, and then uh, so now the only thing that's different is we'll have to we can plot our points. So if we uh, our first intersection occurs at the x value of 0 0.748, so that will be intersect uh, 1, because I had I stored this in intersect. So intersect 1, and then 
um, it should be equal to our threshold there. So I can put threshold, um, and then we'll plot that with red circles. Uh, and then I'll add uh, the other intersections, intersection, so intersect uh, to threshold, and then also RO. Uh, and then I can close that. And if I plot it, let's see what we get. Um, going wrong here oh I that's okay so there we go uh, as you can see we found both of our intersections in using the FSL function uh, and we did we found both at the same time so uh, it's pretty useful and uh, it was a non-linear equation um, and and so it's pretty it's good I'm, uh, it, let me know if you have any questions or comments uh, in the comments below the video thanks for watching